Folks, welcome back. This is teaching number five in the second month of the ICT mentorship. We're going to be talking specifically about how to mitigate losing trades effectively. We're going to look, about, look back at the same sample size of price action, and we're going to go through it a little bit differently. And we're going to assume that we were studying this particular asset class or market, if you will, and we go through our standard markup of uh, market setup and framing the risk and reward multiples and we noted the bull shoulder block and we identified where the market should come back down into it and we identified the mean threshold and hypothetical long entry on the secondary bullish order block now assuming for a moment that uh, we saw this down candle here okay it's all supporting the idea of we should see some uh, some buying or, or recapitalization of this down candle. We see that happening here. Now we don't know for sure that's going to happen, but let's assume for a moment that we went in and we took a long on this position. Okay, and understanding the mean threshold, uh, we don't like to see the middle of the down candle on a bullish order block be violated. Because some of you are all new and there are chances that you'll probably take the trade and want to have a stop loss just a little bit below this mean threshold and there's nothing wrong with that normally but let's just say for instance you did that and you got stopped out okay um, what would you do let's assume that you you did that and you got stopped out what would you do obviously I'm gonna throw you a plot twist you can say that you got a stop out here and you took a full two percent loss or if you're a hot shot and you think you're really you know, uh, an elite trader if you will uh, you risked more than two percent you probably would have been burned pretty bad and if you're a gambler and you risk a lot of money on your trades like that uh, and you don't feel any pain uh, that's a problem but we don't need to take huge risks and we don't need to take a lot of trades but we will encounter losing trades so I'm going to give you a scenario and assume for a moment we saw this panning out. We saw the idea that there should be some upside, but we put our stop loss a little too close to the market and say we took a full stop. Now, assuming that we took that long position and our stop was below the mean threshold and it hit our stop, let's assume for a moment that our maximum leverage and risk on the trade would be at a full 2%. Well, that means we'd have to take another look at the same trade and reevaluate whether or not it's something we can still trade. Obviously, we had our mindset on this potential setup initially, but if the trade hasn't completely unraveled just because it swept us out below the mean threshold on our initial try going long, it doesn't mean the trade's completely no longer viable it just means that we probably were just inaccurate in terms of where our stop loss was placed and we had to take another basically stab at it so now we can take a look at that new order block that forms with this down candle price trades away through it on this candle right here it trades above that down candle so when it does that that authorizes any new return to this down candle as a buying opportunity mark comes down into it here okay we can take a long position here okay and now this time we're going to allow a little bit more movement against us okay because we still would have a strong conviction or hypothetically a strong conviction that the market should move higher the difference is is we're going to go about our leverage a little bit differently and we're going to allow ourselves a little bit more movement against us 
We're not going to be so high strung about getting an ultra uh, tight stop loss. This time, our stop loss is going to actually be below the order block that we're framing our trade around. So the market has created a down candle, shown them willingness to run away off support of a previous down candle, which is a bullish order block. We saw a willingness to capitalize buying with the movement away from this here, came back down. We want to be a buyer right in here at the top of that candle. Okay, so if we did that and we use the bottom of the candle as our stop loss, what are we going to do differently with this? Well, we're going to go long with one half of the position size we used on the initial loss. So for instance, if we took a initial loss of 2% on the first trade, we have to go down to 1%. If we were trading with 1% and we took a full loss on the initial trade, we would have to drop down to one half of 1% of our total equity base. Now, if the initial loss was 2% of the equity base, this trade, again, would be 1% of the equity base in total risk. So we're defining the trade by entering at the top of this body's uh, or this down candle right at the opening. So we would be getting long in here. Okay. If we were to elect to use this down candle as an entry, we could see the return back down into this down candle as well using that. Either way, we're going to use this range defined by the opening of this down candle or the top of this down candle as our entry. Either instance on this movement down or this movement down in here would have given the fill. This is our total risk. Stop below the order block. Main thing is, is we're using half of the leverage and, and position size that we used on the initial loss. So we're defining our trade with this in terms of the risk. Now, all we're going to do is refer back to the original idea of that trade where we first took a loss, hypothetically, and we're going to frame out the idea that the same thing would be seen, hopefully, if we're right in our directional premise. With one movement up, that would be a multiple of R1. So if we have 1% at risk, defined by the entry in here and the stop below here, once we get to this price point here, we're already at 1% return. So we got half of our initial loss back in open profit. Once we get one more standard deviation from what our risk is defined by, we're already at 2% mitigated. In other words, our losing trade that we just had using half of the initial risk is already mitigated. Now, at this point here, this is one of those instances, if you're a new trader, this is where you want to consider taking the trade off. And I can't stress this enough. Sometimes it's just good to get back to even and relax and then regroup, especially if you're late in the week. For instance, say you've been trading all week and you took a loss and it's a Thursday or Friday now and you get the opportunity to get that 2% full stop out back. Take it off. Close the week flat. Do not go into the weekend with a net loss. If the market presents the opportunity to give you that loss back, and you're late in the week or you're late in the trading session, take it off the table, move to the sidelines, and be glad that you did. There's nothing saying this is going to continue going higher. So that's why once the market gives us an opportunity to erase our errors, do so. Notice that at mitigating 2% of the initial trades loss, or the initial trades uh, uh, total loss of 2% of our equity base, we don't even require the market trading above the old highs in here where the buy stops will be residing. So notice that we're already able to mitigate the initial loss of a total 2% a hit on our equity, and it hasn't even really fully moved to our objectives. Obviously, with a, a multiple of 3R, we are now in new territory. So now we've made a new net gain. If you're going to allow the position and not listen to what I just suggested, this is where you want to trail the stop loss up to where you can no longer lose back below open profit of the 2% loss 
once it's been mitigated, you're going to lock that in. So your trailing stops also be placed right there, and you would not permit the, the market to come back against you. And if it stops you out, it stops you out. Bottom line is, is you're not willing to go back down below. If it gives an opportunity to recoup the drawdown, take it or lock it in so it cannot take you back down below um, your equity uh, uh, reference point before the drawdown ensued. Once we get a multiple of R3, okay, in my opinion, that's about where you want to take your profits and square it off. So either you take it off once you mitigate your loss entirely when you get R2, okay, because that's going to basically pay you back whatever your, your loss was percentage-wise. Even if you cut that trade leverage in half, regardless of what it is, you only need a multiple of R2 to get that trade paid back to you. OK, and how many times have we talked about opportunities, how there, there are so many opportunities of the frame three to one or five to one or even more throughout the week. You don't need very much to get that losing trade back. And that's why it's something that's not requiring you to send, spend a lot of time fearful of or obsessing about when you take a loss. They're easy to get back. You just got to allow your mindset to stay focused once the market provides you R2 or the mitigation of your initial loss. You want to lock that in and then give the market room. If you're going to not take the 2% the back off or whatever that initial loss was, if you don't take it off and repay your drawdown and bring you back to the equity base, equity high rather, prior to the drawdown you ensued, uh, you want to at least lock that in. Initially, as you're a developing trader, you want to just take it off the table and just be thankful that you got it back. Um, as you grow into the next stage of the development, you want to just start locking in your stop loss after you get your uh, loss mitigated and then see if it has any more room to go. But initially, you want to not do that. You want to train yourself to say, okay, I fixed my error. I've corrected the drawdown. I'm going to move to the sidelines and start fresh. Okay. Um, the next stage would be, would be to lock that in. And don't allow your, your drawdown to return and see if the market has room to, to run again. In this case, if you allow the market to run and you mitigated your 2% loss after seeing an R2 multiple with a 1% risk, now you have 1% gain. So now you have a new equity high, all in the same trade. All of this has been done in the scope of just looking at one setup that you may have messed it up. You may have um, got in and you got too aggressive about where your stop loss should be. Or sometimes uh, you're just a little early and it's going to run and go to a level that would make perfect sense after you see it do it. But because some of us are very emotional, very rushed to get in and make a decision, there's no reason uh, to fear going back in and taking another look at that trade. Um, how many times have you uh, incurred a loss and you knew that there was still a probability or possibly seeing that trade pan out in the direction you thought it was going to go initially, but you were too afraid to go back in and lose money. If you drop down your amount of leverage and your total risk, cut it in half. Okay, let's get uh, let's play devil's advocate just for a moment. Say we bought this one here. Okay, we bought this one here, and then we used the mean threshold as a stop, and it stopped us out here. And then we used this down candle when price ran back down into it okay we went long and say for instance um you know we did the same thing we were using this middle of this candle here and we want to have ultra short term stop loss and it came down against us and squeezed us out or maybe it scared us okay and the market runs again when it comes back down into this order block here that would be another opportunity so if you started with what if you started with two percent here on this trade here and you got knocked out and you had a full stop the likelihood of you having that probably next to you know, impossible, but we're going to say you took a full stop at 2% two, 2 here on this on the stop. Say you took a 1% full hit here on this, being aggressive, trying to place your stop way too short at the mean threshold, okay, and you get stopped out again. You would have to go down to one half of 1% right here, right here, okay? So again, with that same mindset, if we were using an entry on this basis, and the stop would have to go be below this low now. Look at the range between this candle's opening right here and this low. Think about that in terms of the range. That would be your risk. Okay. Watch what happens. There's 
one half of one percent, one percent, one and a half percent, two percent. You still would have made back your two percent just on that run here. So your your initial large hit of two percent, even with one half of one percent, would have been mitigated. So then you would only be down what one percent. And you can actually let the market run or take another setup. It doesn't have to come back from it doesn't have to come back in all one trade. In other words, one trade doesn't have to erase all of your your losses. But don't think that you can't make the money back or mitigate the losses, okay, without increasing more risk. You can actually do it by reducing risk. And I, I taught this principle years ago online and folks that saw it they were like uh this is stupid why would i want to cut my risk or my leverage down after a losing trade uh well it's because equity preservation is the number one rule in this game and we don't know with any absolution that our trade is going to be profitable so why would any trader think like a moron and not dial back their leverage if they take a losing trade that means you're doing something wrong. The likelihood of you going in and making a winning trade on the next trade as a new trader, highly unlikely because you're going to be in a rush to get back to square one. You want to get that loss back right away. Emotionally, psychologically, that's what you're thinking. But it's not necessary to get it back on the next trade. But in this example, it's very important that we can see that getting to that R3, you can get back your full 2%. If that was the case, you don't need to have increased leverage. You don't have to increase your risk, but you do have to have patience to allow that loss to be mitigated. And you don't need to do it by scaling up your risk. You actually do it by scaling back your risk. Because if, say, for instance, that your first hit at 2%, you took a 2% loss, how do you know that's not a beginning of a 10 string losing? In other words, it, what's to say you don't get nine more losing trades in a row? It can happen to you. It can happen to me. It can happen to anyone. So if you do that and you keep going at 2% or worse, you increase your risk, you're throwing good money after bad. You're, you're building toxic thinking. You're allowing yourself to be beaten down emotionally. You're going to spend a lot of mental capital, and you're going to grow into fear-based trading. And we already spoke about fear-based trading, what that does in the previous uh, lesson. And we don't trade with that. We, we want to avoid that mindset.